stay tuned because coming up next, I will explain the two different file formats that every DSLR has to save images and I'll be comparing them both. Hello and welcome to Jeeves Tried This. My name is Tony and this channel is all about photography and video equipment and process reviews. Today I'm going to talk a bit about RAW and JPEG files. So first let's talk a little bit about JPEG files. Now JPEG files are the most common choice for many photographers and situations. However they are not the perfect way to save your picture files. The JPEG format is a compression file. So every time you save the file, your camera is trying to figure out what to throw out and what it sees best um, as the information to keep. Now, this is all well and good if you're trying to make a small picture, enough to say send by email, but it's not a good situation if you're interested in printing high quality prints or enlargements. When your camera is set to JPEG, the sensor sees a ton of information and it makes its own decision about the brightness and contrast. It then throws out the rest of the information and saves the image as a JPEG file. Now the majority of the time this is okay because cameras are so advanced they can make good decisions on this. However, this is also a problem. After all, it's just the camera powered by batteries and that's about to make the decision on your next masterpiece. And this is just based on a sensor and an algorithm. It doesn't think like human brains. It doesn't differentiate what is artistic and what should it look like in your eyes. Now, if you take an image using RAW, then you take back that control. RAW allows you to be able to make the image the way that you see it in your eyes and it allows your brain to have that freedom to be artistic. By taking an image in JPEG, this means you're giving up some of your rights in favour for, say, less editing and a smaller file size. So what does RAW mean? Well, basically the short and less boring version is RAW is actually not an image file. RAW is more of an information file that stores all the information that the sensor in your camera captures. Now, only up until recently you needed special software to be able to read these RAW files as an image file and then be able to edit the file the way that you see it before saving it as an image file, like a JPEG. However, these days it seems that technology is moving very quickly and more and more computers can read these files as an image file. And even smartphones these days can now read these files. Don't worry though, as the image these create doesn't, doesn't do anything to the original raw file. The image you see is a bit like a read file and the actual image you see is just based on the information that your computer can read. And all the original details are still safe and sound in like an extension file. Now Canon cameras, they either use CR2 or CRW files and Nikon use NEF files. So how do you take pictures in RAW? Well, this is where the tricky science bit comes in. No, I'm only just kidding. The way you take a RAW file is the same way you take any other image. There's no science, there's no complication, there's no tricks you need to learn. And all you have to do is go into your camera system and change the recording format to say JPEG to RAW. Or you can even tell your camera to save the images in both formats. However, this will take up a huge amount of space on your memory card. So how big is a RAW file? Well, RAW files are huge compared to JPEG files. They take up much more room on your memory card and your computer. Now this might not be an issue if you're using large capacity memory cards and hard drives, but it's worth thinking about if you're using smaller memory cards, say two gig or less, and you're not ready to invest in a larger one, say a 16 or 32 gig. If you're currently at this stage, then you would probably stick to say JPEG for the time being. But if you're somewhere in between, say you've got four gig memory cards, then this will hold around 200 raw files compared to say 1400 of the highest quality JPEG files. But don't take this as gospel as it all depends on your camera 
and you make a model. But do consider raw files are roughly five times the size of a JPEG. Now you're probably thinking, but now I've got to edit this file. Well, remember, as I said earlier, raw files are not yet image files. These are information files that can be read as an image file. So to edit these, you will need an editing program like Photoshop or Lightroom. Now these programs are really great at converting the data from the raw file into an image file. But once you open up these files, you can then edit these to your heart's content and save them as a JPEG or say a TIFF. And you will finally get those pixels that you've been looking for, you know, those little dots that make up a picture. So shooting in RAW does require commitment. Don't think that you can just shoot in RAW, pop down to your local supermarket and expect to get prints from these files because you can't. Shooting in RAW requires commitment from you as a photographer. And now you are also becoming an editor and making the photos that you see, not just in your eyes, but what the creativity in your brain sees. You are saving all that natural raw data that is available and you now have the control to manipulate light, contrast, white balance, and the tone to make your next masterpiece pop. Now you might be thinking at this stage, wow, all I really want to do is take a photo and put it on the internet. Well, that's fine, just stick with JPEG, but if you want to take your photography to the next level, then give RAW a go and have a play around with all the settings and things that you can adjust. You may find yourself getting a little bit addicted though. Just don't overdo it with the settings. Think about how you want the image to look and start with minor adjustments. So what reason would you need to use a RAW? Well, a really good reason for shooting in RAW is we all make mistakes, right? Say if you take a photo and it's underexposed or it's overexposed. Using RAW, you can rescue what could have been a deleted image to a hang on the wall image. What about if you forget to adjust the white balance? Again, in RAW, you can adjust it there. Now, we all want to get to the stage in our life where we can get that perfect image straight out the camera without any editing. But until that time comes, if ever, using RAW can be like your little superhero getting you out the shit when you need it. Now, I bet you're also now thinking, well, I can edit JPEGs. What is this dude on about? Well, technically you're right and wrong. With a JPEG, once you start the editing process, you are actually destroying the information in that JPEG file as it's already been processed by your camera. Where, as in RAW, you are not actually editing the information. You are editing the information, how it is read then you are saving that information to a JPEG file. You're then processing that information the way that you want it to look. So as a new starter to the raw world, I would say get yourself a larger memory card to start with and use this and set yourself some small projects shooting in raw and JPEG, and then try out some editing. Try some landscape photography and see how you can make the foreground really pop just by small little edits to the raw file. Well, I hope this introduction has cleared up some questions that you may have had about RAW and JPEG files. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out all my other videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.